Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my review of Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Steve Otter. This review will contain spoilers for The Raven Cycle, which was Maggie Steve Otter's not first series that she wrote, but the original series that this spinoff series is based off of. So just know going in to this book that I highly recommend you read The Raven Cycle beforehand if you haven't already, because there are a lot of references to the characters that were introduced in that series. And that's kind of where this whole concept of dreamers was really introduced and that's explored a lot more in this trilogy. So that being said, <laughs> this follows the story of Ronan who was one of the main characters from the Raven Cycle who is called a dreamer and in this world dreamers are able to pull things out of their dreams which is a highly coveted ability for those who can control it. Uh, so they keep themselves very well hidden in this world. However, we do have a couple of new characters that are introduced in this story, one of them being someone who is hunting dreamers for their abilities, and another character who is also a dreamer but can't control their ability. So first things first, I really, really loved that we explored more of the magic system and the world of dreamers that was introduced in the Raven Cycle because that was such a fascinating aspect of that series and I love that we dug even deeper into it here. It's so interesting and the dream sequences in this book are really cool. I, I loved that from the Raven Cycle. so. That now that we got even more of it in this book, I was all for it. And I also like that we now are introducing this concept of these people who are hunting the dreamers for what they can do. So I'm really excited to see that explored even more in future books in this trilogy. We start off this book pretty slowly. Uh, we pick up right where we left off with the Raven Cycle and Ronan's story. Um, and we're following more of his perspective with his family included as well. So Declan, who was mentioned just briefly in The Raven Cycle, plays a huge role in this book as well as, well as Matthew, Ronan's younger brother. And I really loved the family dynamic between them. However, what I will say is now that we're introduced, well, I guess really spending more time with Ronan's brothers, it actually, for this book and for me, made Ronan a little less likable, which was really weird because I loved Ronan from The Raven Cycle, so I was expecting to absolutely love him again, but the introduction, I guess, of more of the family dynamic really made me like Declan a lot more, which I wasn't expecting. So actually, my favorite character in this particular book was Declan. I thought he was much more likable than Ronan in this book. And I think a big part of Ronan's character that I loved from the original series was his dynamic with Gansey and his kind of relationship that was building with Adam. And now that we don't have Gansey in this series, and now that Adam's kind of away, but kind of still in the picture, and they have this sort of established relationship. It's not as much fun to explore their relationship as it was when it was kind of budding <laughs> and blossoming, uh, if you will. So I actually found that Ronan didn't shine quite as much in this book for some of those reasons. He didn't have Gansey to play off of and Adam's relationship with him was already well established so it wasn't like a fun, new, exciting romance to explore. So in some ways, I still liked Ronan, but I wish the dynamics between the characters were a little bit different in this story. And it just really made me miss Gansey. <laughs> uh, another thing I'll talk about, though, is a new character, Jordan, who is the dreamer who can't seem to control um, their dreams. And I really loved her character. And when we finally kind of have all of our characters meet up, it, it was really fun to see their dynamics with each other. So I think future books are going to be uh, better in my opinion, just because now that everyone's kind of together, we can start 
having more of like that wit and banter between the characters that made me love the Raven Boys so much. This book does end with an extreme cliffhanger and I was not a huge fan because for the majority of the book I thought it was very well paced. It was a little slow in the beginning but the pacing became pretty consistent throughout. However, the last about 50 pages flew by. It was like a whiplash and I feel that the ending was so rushed and I know that there's going to be more books. That's not my complaint. My complaint is that as a standalone, like if you were just to read this one book, you do not have a complete story whatsoever. So that for me, I didn't love because other series do that very well where the first book, even though it leaves it off where you can continue on and be excited for the story to continue, it serves its purpose well on its own. And that book, and this particular installment really doesn't do that. It doesn't serve its own story very well. So it really is going to rely on the rest of the series to bring it all together and answer a ton of questions, um, wrap up a ton of things that were happening because this really provides absolutely no closure um, and leaves every kind of cliffhanger you can imagine. So that for me just was a little bit of a miss. I wasn't a big fan of the pacing at the very end. But starting to get into more spoilers. Um, so if you want to skip the spoiler part, I'll put a timestamp when I go back to kind of my wrap up. Um, but the very ending battle scene in the dream with uh, Jordan and um, Ronan and the lace, I can't picture what the lace looks like in my head because it's not described as a thing that you see. It's described kind of as a thing that you like feel. And f as a reader, I didn't like that choice because I can't, for the life of me, picture what it was that these characters were battling. I, I had no idea. So it, it just like wasn't fun to read about because I couldn't picture anything that was going on in my head. Um, so I didn't really love the choice that Maggie Seabotter made of making the lace more of like this internal, like intrinsic villain that wasn't like a, a thing that you could actually like beat. It was more of like a feeling. I, I'm still so confused by this lace thing. So if anyone else has a different interpretation of the lace villain at the end or the lace monster, definitely let me know um, in the comments down below. But yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. So overall, I gave this book a four out of five stars. I loved the world building and building up more of this dreamer magic in this world. I really loved the new characters that were introduced, especially Declan, focusing more on him and Jordan, I absolutely loved. Um, but for me, the ending and that pacing at the very end really was a miss and I didn't love the um, villain in the story. So for those reasons, I knocked it down the star, but I'm really excited to continue on with the series. And I do recommend this book if you've read The Raven Cycle. I wouldn't recommend it if you haven't because there's gonna be so much that you miss. So that's my review of Call Down the Hawk. I hope you enjoyed it. Have you all read this one? Definitely let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this book. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it that thumbs up and subscribe. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And until next time, bye!